Hello everyone and welcome back. I went to a local comic book show and it didn't go very well. So this comic show was in West Virginia, specifically Hurricane or Hurricane, depending on where you're from, West Virginia. So I had a bit of a drive to make it to this convention. Now I kind of knew about this last second. Our friend Bob Barker, again, our comic book liaison, gave us the tip that this would be a great show to come to and potentially set up as a dealer's. So I packed up the Sticky Goose gear and we got on the road. I was excited. I had a good bit of stuff to sell, not a crazy amount, and I actually brought the display board too. When I got to the venue, I was overwhelmed at how nice this was. This was by far the best comic book show I had ever been to in the state of West Virginia, no question. Super nice venue, a bunch of comic book dealers specifically were all set up and it, it was great. Uh, we had a great display space and the best part was I was next to two of my buddies, Bob Barker and then my other friend uh, Justin and we were able to um, set up, he used kind of half of my board and uh, we were set up next to Bob's. Well, um, things were going pretty well. Uh, actually was there for about an hour and a half, two hours uh, before things didn't go so well and actually had sold a couple things. Things were going great and um, I decided that I was going to start filming the show. When I go to these shows and especially when I set up, I was... I want to have, I, I try to make uh, several videos of this. I usually make a video of me being a dealer and then me being a showgoer. I wanted to potentially get some interviews with some dealers. So I actually brought extra gear. Like I brought my, uh, my light, I brought my uh, tripod, I brought my microphone, um, it, it was, I was going to interview multiple dealers. People had came up to me within the first 15, 20 minutes of me being there saying, hey, uh, you know, I watch your videos, I support you. S a couple super nice guys came up and said that and I really appreciate that. As soon as I strapped on and, and, and put the strap on on, things did not go so well. So what I'm gonna show you, and I've, ha I've had a lot of criticism about not including audio, this is the interaction that I had with the promoter of this show. Turn your camera on. Why is that? Because I'm running the show. Do you own this place? No, I don't own the place, but I, I ran the place, and you trashed me on the show before. So Let's talk about All right, so the first thing, right off the bat, I have taken out his face from this because, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know what this guy is capable of. Um, he's already threatened to call the police on me. Um, and I don't know what else he is capable of doing. The saying, I have an axe to grind, this guy embodied that specifically. So why does this guy hate me? The promoter of this Comic-Con, why does he hate me? Well, not surprisingly, there are a fair bit of people in the comic book community that don't particularly care for your boy Sticky Goose. Well, this gentleman specifically does not care for me because of a video I made um, last January in 2023 at a local con, um, a local comic book show. I, um, I made a video of a vlog style video I was looking at, one, at his booth specifically. The, the main focus of the video was around his booth because it was the best booth um, at that convention. So the first thing I'm going to ask anybody to do, as I and I'm obviously showing some of the footage of, of that convention now, I would recommend anybody to go back to watch that video to see exactly what I said about him and how I, how I said it, how I depicted him, 
And then you can make the determination of whether or not I uh, insulted him and, and warranted the action that he took against me um, at, at this Comic-Con this day. So what happened? Um, as soon as I put on the strap on, he emerged out of the ether. I mean, his, his eyes, I mean, his eyes saw through everything. I don't know how, I mean, he must have eyes in the back of his head and he, he came over to me immediately. Stop filming now. And I'm on guard already because of my trials and tribulations. If you guys have followed the channel for any length of time, um, I'm, I'm on guard when I'm filming already, but this, this show specifically I knew was going to be a problem because I knew that this guy had beef with me. So um, it was not surprising or shocking that he acted the way he did. Now, was I hurting anybody? Hurting anybody? No. Was I insulting anyone? No. Um, was I being a good little boy? I, I think I was actually being a very good little boy, to be honest. Um, but in his eyes, I, I crossed the line as soon as I strapped on. So automatically, I was very defensive in this situation. You know, what what is what is going on? Like, why why are you telling me to stop filming? And some of the first questions I asked him when he got up in my face was, um, "Do you own this building? Do, you, do is this your building?" And and basically, he gave me the runaround, the rigmarole of he had permission from the owners of this building to uh, remove anybody that he deemed necessary. So I th he knew I was coming um, because of my talks with Bob Barker. Um, he knew that the potential of me coming was very high. Um, so, so he was ready and he was, he was looking for any opportunity to, to, to kick me out, mess with me, um, ruin my day. And he did. So he's kind of yammering back and forth with me. He, he tells me that he, he starts telling me a couple things. He says, one, you didn't pay to set up as a vendor. So the vendor set up at this was $20. There was no, fee, there was no fee for admission. There, there was no, there was no fee at the door either. So this was a very affordable, cheap show for vendor and showgoer. And, um, the deal was that I was going to pay Bob Barker because Bob had bought multiple tables so that uh, the, the person that he was he was supposed to be set up with, she bailed out at the last minute. So I was going to step in and take her table. So my the financial aspect of this was going to like Bob lunch box, lunch room, he then elementary also school me, type stuff. Uh, and this was this he is says, classic. You're not nerd part of the Facebook group. And I, apparently, there's a West Virginia buying and selling comic book Facebook group that he is the arbiter of and I am not in that group. So therefore I could not set up as a vendor because I'm not in that Facebook group is what he was implying, which I found hilarious because I said, why, why does that matter that I'm not in the Facebook group? And as this guy was getting kind of like, closer and closer to me, um, I could see he was afraid. He was like afraid in his eyes. And, and not that I'm obviously the most intimidating person. It was just, you could tell that he, he was angry. He was scared. Um, he was hurt and he, 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 he had an ax to grind. He wanted to mess with me. He wanted to, to ruin this. And um, he said, I'm not going to let you trash any of the vendors here. And I said, who's to say that I'm going to trash anyone? Are a lot of the people that were there, I know. They have, I have bought from them. They have bought from me. There were several guys there that I didn't know. 
Um, and there was people that came up to me talking to me, you know, saying they watch my videos. They've seen me at a con before. Uh, one of the guys, the owner of a, a shop says, um, you know, he, he loves my videos. And I was like, dude, I, I don't have beef with anybody in here except for you now. Literally, I have no beef with anybody. So it was, it was pathetic on multiple levels. Um, and, and I, I really suggest that you go back and watch that video to see his justification for kicking, for, for basically saying to stop filming. He didn't kick me out. Let me be clear on that. Um, he, he basically said, you know, you can sell your books, but you're not filming in here. After, after an interaction like that, I was too, I was too, too heated. I was too hot. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't sit there any longer. Second part of this video, we are going to uh, kick it over here and we are going to talk to uh, Mother Goose about some of the leg legality issues of what happened. All right, everybody. So that was the footage. That was the experience. We're back here with Mother Goose and we want to talk her opinions, the legality of everything. And what does this mean moving forward? What did you think of the mess I got in this time? You know, it, it just doesn't surprise me anymore. <laughs> you were just so ashamed when I came back. Home. I wasn't ashamed. No, that wasn't that wasn't my thoughts at first. No, it was just like, <sighs> you know, I. What do you do? What do you do? I can't. I'm not there with you, so I can't tell you. Yeah. Well, that's because you what won't to go, do. You won't go with me. You won't go with me to the cons. <laughs> I would go. I've been with you before. You have. It's been a. It's been a minute. Been a minute. So you brought something interesting to the table, and something that has come up many times in the comments is what the heck is the whole legal situation behind the filming? So so many of the problems that I've had have been due to my strap on and whether or not the strap on is legal. So when I go into these places of business, when I'm out in public, when I'm at these comic cons. Am I allowed legally, and we're talking about in the state of West Virginia, by God, am I legally allowed to film in there? So, disclaimer, this is not legal advice, but in my understanding of criminal law, as a lawyer, <laughs> yes, you're allowed to film because West Virginia is a one-party state, a single-party consent state. So that means that as long as there's one person in this conversation that's, that is consenting. that's a consenting, it doesn't matter. As long as he is the one consenting to this being recorded, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a reasonable expectation of privacy in a public place. When you're filming in a convention such as the one that you were filming in, mm -hmm. There's no reasonable expectation of privacy because it's a public place. There, the public has access to this facility, this location. You're allowed to film there because it's a public place. You're allowed to be there right. and film. There's no expectation of privacy because you're out in the public. Now, if you're in a bathroom, that's a private place. Right. There's a reasonable expectation that there's privacy and you're not to be filmed when you're in a private situation. Mm-hmm. So it's the same philosophy. And and that one party consent also applies to things like phone conversations, for example. So yes. if I was I can theoretically uh, record a phone conversation because I'm the one consenting. I don't have to have both parties consent. That is not the case in all states, correct? That's correct. Not all states are like that. But West Virginia is one of those one party states. Almost think of like the Sopranos. Like, you know, when they have their secret hidden... The wiretaps. The wiretaps. It's the same thing. Going forward with this, you know, the strap-on has caused much grief. It's caused a lot of problems. People don't like being filmed necessarily. Whether or not they like it or not, it it is... It's legal. It's legal. But in that situation, I feel like you did the right thing. Because even though he asked you to stop filming, even though you were legally allowed to do so, you stopped. 
yeah, I, I, I turn the camera off um, in that situation. And every single time somebody has told me to stop filming them, I have. And, and you know, my track record speaks to that with the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as this going forward, I mean, so many of my most popular videos, so many of the viewers want to see these vlog, these first person hunting and hauls, me going into these places. And it's just very difficult for me to say, I'm just going to hang this up because it's caused so many problems. I don't, I don't want to stop doing it because it's just been so successful. And so him, him threatening to call the police, do you think that that was warranted or, um, how he should have approached that in any manner? So when, when I watched it originally, I was a little confused because at first, correct me if I'm wrong, but he said that I was, he was going to call the police to have you escorted out. He never said that. Okay, well, he was going to get the police involved. Well, the police wouldn't do anything because technically he's not doing anything illegal, but they could just ask him politely to leave the situation because that's what the police do. They provide or they make sure that people are you know, society is in an orderly fashion being cooperative and right. not causing, you know, harm. So if I had continued to film and after the police arrived, could that be something that I would be arrested for? No, because technically, based on, again, my understanding, you're allowed to film even more so when police are involved because you're allowed to film the police doing their job as policemen. Right. Because, you know, you have to make, you, police just can't come in there or civilians can't just it, be taught. Illegal search and seizure. Yeah. It's, it's all about protecting yourself. And if the police, it, it's a balance of powers on that end. Yeah. Now, obviously, if someone's asking you to stop, should you stop? That's like courtesy but are you legally allowed to do so yes you are but like if he was the owner of the of the building and that was that was the first thing i one of the first things i asked i think it might have been the first thing i asked do you own this building which even so even if he was the owner of the building it's still a public place because he's allowing members of the public to enter the facility right there's no expectation of privacy now Does he have discretion of who gets to enter? That is the question. So could he remove you from the building for filming? No. But could he remove you from the building for other reasons? Maybe. It's almost like no shoes, no shirt, no no service. Service, yeah. Stuff like that. But obviously, he couldn't discriminate against you for certain reasons. He couldn't not allow you to participate with the other public members for certain things. Like if I had HIV. Or you were black or you were gay or certain things like that. To me, he's not allowed to discriminate against you because those are illegal ways of discriminating. Well, how does he not know that I have don't have HIV? Yeah, because that's not why he's not letting you in the building. He's not letting you not participate because you have HIV. He's not going (laughs) around and be like, Do you have HIV? That's not how he's that's not like to me that's more of like Uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, like an OSHA violation? Or, no, or? like a hate crime. Oh, a hate crime, yeah. Because you're like being pointed out for a specific reason. All right. I mean, you could say he has a hate crime against Sticky Goose, but... He does hate Sticky Goose. He does. <laughs> Maybe he hates all <laughs> geese. So he's... It was a hate crime perpetrated against Sticky Geese. Which... That'd be wow. a hard one to prove in court. <laughs> I've got all the fit footage to prove that. All this information came from the what was it exactly? West Virginia Code. Yeah, but you, you other used other fancy words like the statutes and Yeah. West Virginia Code. Okay. Well, according to West Virginia Code, I mean there's nothing there's no, there's nothing stopping me from doing what according I'm doing. According to the West Virginia Code of West Virginia. Imagine if I just all of a sudden <laughs> came out with that if somebody started messing according with according to me. section 61-31-60 i mean that's just that's too much 
<laughs> but I kind of would like you to start doing that though. That would be really. I funny. need that. I need that memorized. Like you it's like one of those back things. Pocket. It's like one of those things. Like you memorize your social security number. <laughs> you memorize like your phone number. You know, that's one of those things. Yeah. But. I mean, it's sad because I feel like that's not what your intent is when you go in and film. You're going in to film these things to make fun content to to give the audience on YouTube. My intention of going in there is not to start crap. No. I don't want to start crap. No. It's not fun. And the only reason it's strapped mm. on is because it's easier to look through things rather than hold your phone and like point. But people they See, I wasn't one of those guys. Like I didn't used to film things. Like I even hated taking pictures. Like when we go on vacations and stuff. Yeah. And then Ever since this channel, I mean, I'm rocking a strap on wherever I go. And, you know, I can see how if you don't wear strap ons, how it may affect you negatively because it's like, why is this doofus filming everything? Right. And I mean, that angers people just right off the bat. And I mean, it, you know, you see some schmuck with like a selfie stick and he's like, flinging it around i mean you want to you want to do violence on him you know what i mean you want to use violence <laughs> i on don't that think for, violence is the word i'm thinking of. Uh, i think of but pity <laughs> you pity them but you would you want to bully them too so whenever i whenever somebody sees a strap on they're like this this doofus i want to i want to mess with him so maybe you should start carrying a selfie stick maybe people would pity you versus like hate on you so you think the strap on's hate and the selfie stick is pity there's something about a selfie stick. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I've seen some selfie sticks of some comic book YouTubers before, and I did pity them. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I thought. It. There's something about I it. I did pity them. Or you could start wearing it like on your forehead. Oh. Or like a hat. Come on. I could do that. That would be funny. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give it the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.